changing our masters and um, who has power or control in our life is no easy thing. Um, both scripture passages today are about that transformation, that turn that God can bring. Um, our theology would call that redemption um, and that renewal, that help in getting us to a place where we're not stuck anymore, calling us back, turning us around in repentance if it's we who have done the harm, but then also working through us, with us, in us, and in spite of us to bring newness to bring a new possibility, to bring a new hope, to bring life in the midst of death. Sometimes it's very literal. Um, there's been funerals that have happened this past week. And there have been funerals um, in this past week that a colleague of mine did um, that in which there were two ants completely at war and a feud um, in the family who in the broken open space um, that a death or that an ending is, and in the words that were shared and were spoken, we're able to find healing in terms of finding the courage to lay to rest the argument and to move on into relating differently. That's the redemption. That's the new moment where relationship is changed, where we are different, where we interact with others around us and experiences differently. And that's what we pray for. Um, and for all of the joys and all of the concerns that have been raised, for all of the freak accidents that have turned our worlds upside down lately, for all that has happened, we come here on Sunday mornings to remember that there is a God who is at work, who knows the broken openness of pain and of injustice and of sin and of evil, and who also knows the way out. This past week, um, well, I guess the two weeks ago, I wasn't here because I was at a continuing education um, retreat with um, four clergy colleagues that we have been together for the last seven years supporting each other and have a text group that um, daily we're texting back and forth and are able um, to be together and have gone through major life transitions together, both very anxiety producing and hard and painful and both really exciting and beautiful and joyful. There's no way I could be a pastor or the person that I am without them in my life. Um, and while we were meeting with um, a mentor who's um, taken some time to guide us, we were talking about how hard it is sometimes to do life and how it just seems that things can pile up on end and on end and all we are is emptied. Um, and he was talking with us about a very simple thing that if we can do to try to build into our body, soul, memory, um, that redemption is possible and does happen. And it's that pairing. So whenever we have an encounter that just completely depletes and empties us, how do we be intentional then about having a next experience with someone that we know is safe space who will fill us? And how do we put those two together? Um, so because there are always going to th be things that are out of our control. But how can we line up the way that we do life and the meetings or the times that we gather with different people so that we are giving ourselves energy even as we know that it will be taken away? Um, and it's something that's really simple um, that has helped me um, in terms of how I approach, um, how I plan, and what I do when. Um, because we are in this for the marathon. This is no easy journey. Our psalmist today is talking about a prayer for deliverance, for God to come and to set this psalmist free from all that has trapped her, from all that has surrounded him from all of the help that is needed. And in a few verses earlier, it talks about the waters coming up to the psalmist's neck. Um, and, and that's close enough, right, before we're totally under and we get that in English. Um, but what we lose in translation is that the Hebrew word for neck has also um, root words and understandings of life and soul. 
And that can happen too often, that life comes up to our soul, to the very essence of who we are. And so we come together to remind us that as real and as dangerous and as evil as that um, aspect of life is and is present, that there are others that are working with God and through God and in God for something different. And so when we hit a crisis point of an accident turning our world upside down, we can look down the pew at someone who's a little bit farther out of that crisis and give, give witness and testimony to making it out. We can't go this road alone. As we are celebrating our mission team going off um, on their trip, it reminds me of two years ago um, when I was at uh, Metropolitan Memorial United Methodist Church um, in D.C. Um, and our team was preparing for our Appalachian Service Project trip and had to leave late um, because there was a man who was killed at our St. Luke's Mission Center um, because... There was a man who knew that the guy who owed him 40 bucks was sleeping there and stabbed the wrong person. There is evil that comes into our world that undoes us, that fractures life in a way that we don't even understand the full weight and the full trouble. And you all have experienced that some years back in the Browning family. For those of you who don't know, this is a family who is part of our community and a part of Cockeysville. Um, and one of the sons, um, and for whatever happened, we'll leave that off and not try to understand that, um, but killed his parents and his two brothers. There are horrible things that happen that completely fracture our life. Crucifixions were meant to inspire fear and to keep this fracturing happen. When we talk about this evil, the hope that we have is that there is a God who knows what this evil is in God's very being who knows what that fracturing feels like and who knows what that fracturing does in our communities, in our cities, and in our families. And who gave all of who God is to heal that fracturing and to show us how to heal it as well. And so as disciples of Christ, we are called to take all of life that has us up to our neck, that has our souls, and to speak into it the love and the hope and the power of God's redemption. Evil will always happen. Worlds will always be turned upside down. There's no way we can escape that. But there is a way that we can hand it over to one who can tumble it over to take out the barbed wire and the edges that will jag and hook us and keep us from being able to be whole ever again. And that can bring healing and that can take what is evil and horrible and ready to kill us and turn it into a testimony of power and of a different way and of hope. And so that is what we are going to do with Troop 4065's help today. Because the prayer garden that they have taken care of and reclaimed for us was made by the son who killed his family as his Eagle Scout project. And there's a reason that it's been neglected on our property. And there's a reason that we have not been able to approach it. Because in it, we see the fracturing that has happened all across our city and in our communities. Because the effects of evil are real. But we are going to do what my mentor did and pair something that emptied us with something that has filled us. 
with a Girl Scout troop that has come together for their bronze award to take the fracturing of pieces and make a mosaic cross to remind us of God's redeeming power, to bring healing to a place that has reminded us of pain, to center ourselves in the work that God can do in us, through us, with us, and in spite of us, so that we are indeed able to walk in the newness of life as Christ has promised. So we're going to sing a hymn together um, to center ourselves in that. And then for all of those who are able, we're going to um, leave not as we typically, right, leave after service out um, the back doors, but we're going to go out this door and we have a liturgy and a prayer to share um, to reclaim that space in the garden. Um, it's part of the liturgy um, that we used at the St. Luke's Mission Center when there were communities that came together and family that came together that didn't know each other or didn't know how that they had been a part of Joel's life. And in that moment, the fracturing was made whole once more because we could see the whole family, we could see the whole village, and we could heal each other, we could heal that space, and we could find the strength to live from that healing and not from the pain. So for this coming week, and whatever has your neck and your soul, if you could spend some time in prayer and giving it over to God, that God might do what only God can do and bring redemption and bring healing. Would you please stand and join in singing, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.